The next three months is going to see Wrath Classic and Dragonflight. So after a few rocky years, this really is Blizzard's big chance to get the ship moving in the right direction. It's their big moment, and what we're going to cover today is the next vital step in World of Warcraft's progression. So it's a pretty damn exciting one, honestly. Now, if you'd like to support what we do, you can of course check out The Pale Beyond, the game that we are developing. So. If you would like a narrative role-playing game inspired by some of the greatest tales of heroism, adventure, and leadership, well, that have really ever happened in the old real world, um, and you'd like a narrative you can cozy up with, then hit up our Steam, wishlist the game, it truly does help out a lot. And yes, we too are still on schedule for a release this year. So what'll come out first, Pale or Dragonflight? Okay, if I say anything else, I'll jinx it. Let's get into the news then. So. Dragonflight has hit a very major milestone, and that is beta. So, beta test, that opens up way more accounts, so double check your battle.net if you've opted into that. And it's came along with a few pretty big things, actually. First up, character copy. So now, you'll be able to test your own character on Dragonflight. Add-ons are then also enabled, so that actually means there's going to be plenty of time for add-on developers to update their works. Beyond that, big news for you paladins, you've got something you've wanted. So just as Ian said, you're getting a combat res. It's a two second cast for holy and ret, but for prod, it's instant, costing three holy power. Then for evokers, you'll be bringing heroism to the party. Also, Blizzard's solution to covenants uh, is in, and quite simply, the covenant features will be disabled outside of the Shadowlands. So your class and your covenant abilities will not come with you. I mean, we always knew we had to move away from the borrowed power and that something like this would happen. I'm sure though, if you went and collected all your night face soul shapes, it'll feel a little bit shitty not have them. And that being said, a few Shadowlands design things have actually moved on and will actually live within the new talent system. Now, speaking of that, well, priests, you finally got your update blog. Took a while. Mistweavers also got a little bit of love with the post covering their tree layout, reduced rotational clutter, mist and fist weaving, plus essence font. And with Vengeance Demon Hunter talents also being added, I believe now that every single spec's core talent update is actually in. Obviously, pending many revisions, one would hope. Now, as for my new main spec of disc, fascinating change because Powered Shield is now larger but has a cooldown and that's with Renew and Flash Heal being our intended atonement spreaders or applicators, and that does mean that gameplay will be shook up quite a bit, though I'm going to leave the analysis to the pros. Now, it was widely believed that development on Priest and Druid, I believe, were stalled because a designer just left the company, so it's hard to say if that's literally it, but I suppose that would explain the delay. Now, sticking on talents, Blizzard have announced the lovely quality of life feature, and that is that talent loadout sharing and importing will be a thing. That'll conveniently let us share some builds. Oh, and also, you can actually search talents, so that's pretty neat. And I think that means that from now to launch, it's just going to be a case of refining and refining and testing and just seeing what those talents actually end up feeling like, and as well, testing some of the feel of end game progression, because Beta broadly does mean feature complete, but needing polish and refinement. As for the other things in this build then, well, we now know where the Dragon Isles are, per the transport map. It's northeast uh, Azeroth, which is hardly a surprise, and it is far enough away from the core continents that it makes sense that it wasn't part of Kalimdor back before the Sundering when it was all just one big sort of Pangaea-style uh, supercontinent. Blizzard also did a blog post on UI and HUD. It was mostly outlining their overall plan, but thankfully, I noticed that it included a screenshot that still did show the revamped player and target frames that we saw at the um, sort of BlizzCon line styled uh, reveal that Dragonflight got. Now that was good for me to see. I was, uh, I was starting to get a bit worried that those had been cut because, well, they just haven't been in any of the new builds. So if Blizzard included that in the blog post, it probably does mean that the new clean redesign is going to make it in. Other than that, they really do have the bones of something good, but they really need to get filters in for buffs and debuffs. I think if they do that, we'll be in a pretty fantastic place. I think this core revamp has probably meant they've re-architected the whole thing, and it should be a good foundation for future refinement. 
Plus, I suppose it'll be interesting to see if add-on developers can, instead of doing an Elf UI style total overhaul, if they'll be able to just mod in nice little features to the new base Blizzard UI system. For other things then, PvPers, you've got the Nakudon Proving Grounds Arena. Uh, Blizzard also covered a bit of their PvP talent philosophy. Herbalism is in, and the final Dragonflight dungeon is available for testing. And that means that other than the raid, I guess just about everything is in. Hmm, we're getting there. Another thing happened too. The retail public test realm actually went down, and then it was patched to 10.0, and this almost certainly means that Blizzard are getting ready to test out that pre-patch. Now, do you remember the rather spicy but sort of believable leaks? Well, according to those, Dragonflight pre-patch will launch October 25th. That's just under two months away, and the leak thing said that the full expansion would launch a month after that. Now, pre-patch is going to bring the major systemic changes to the game. So you'll see the revamped talents, you'll see, I suppose, the revamped pro professions, but most of that profession stuff only really kicks off once you actually see, like, the, the new Dragonflight stuff, which you won't be able to get in pre-patch. Pre-patch does, though, open up a whole bunch of new race class combos, specifically allowing any race to be a mage, priest, or rogue. Evokers will also be playable for those who pre-order, which is kind of funny because it meant the Blizzard actually had to make a set of, like, conduits and Torghast powers and things for Evokers, which uh, I'm sure that felt a bit odd to develop. Anyway, it's also going to include the Ulderman revamp dungeon and some sort of world event, I believe, that will get us a currency called Primeval Essence that we'll be able to spend on eye level 252 catch-up gear. So... There you go. Fairly major progress. I think the next, ma you know, the, the big major milestone has been, you know, it's been crossed. The next milestone after this is seeing for the pre-patch a release candidate and for the beta, well, uh, a release candidate build as well. But that won't be for uh, probably a few months yet. Fair play. The WoW esports crew are really trying, and look, I know loads of you aren't into esports for WoW. To be honest, I'm not either, but it is nice to see that Blizzard are actually putting some effort in here, even when we're in quite the turndown. So hopefully this is really us seeing them experiment in sort of new formats, new shows to see what works, maybe do some trial runs that they can carry forward into, uh, into Dragonflight. So the first one is a race between Liquid and Echo. It's called Zymox's Charity Cash. Ah, it's neat. So the guilds will race each other through select Nathria and Sepulchre bosses, collecting money for charity as they go. Bosses are going to have two Fated Affixes be active, and each raid will have two checkpoints. Those checkpoints will grant charity money, and it'll be double for the guild that hits the checkpoint first. But the guild who hits the checkpoint first will get the Fated Curse modifier that will make a following encounter be more chaotic. That's actually design effort. Like, that's really cool. This is really cool for community engagement, right? So that's pretty sweet. The next one then is the Solo Shuffle Showdown, where 36 players from each region will play three Solo Shuffle matches. The top 12 are going to advance to the finals where they will then do two matches and then the six highest scoring will play a final match where one DPS and one healer will be crowned winner. So there you go, a solo uh, tournament. Neat. Look, between these two things and the variety show, we are actually seeing a blizzard that is far more agile. And while maybe this stuff is not super up some of our alleys, I do think these are great initiatives to engage the community, right? Like the Race to World First and the MDI, those show us, and the AWC, that there is a competitive audience for the game. And I think doing more one-off, like, special events that are a bit different like this, I think that'll broaden the audience. I don't care as much for, say, the MDI, but a little, you know, limited, like, oh, it's a race of two great guilds that would appeal more to a, I guess, a more general person like me. Also, speaking of events, the Great Push Finals are actually going on this weekend, so you can go check those out if you enjoy it. The Wrath Classic pre-patch is live! The Fresh Start servers are up, and it's time, friends, for a new digital consumption occasion. The Deluxe Edition Upgrade Bundles are here. One is heroic, the other one is epic, so you may ask, 
what do they have? Okay, well, the heroic one will have a level 70 boost. That level 70 boost includes expert riding, a race-specific epic ground mount, faction-specific rare flying mount, 70 weapon skill, set of green gear, four 14 slot bags, some gold, and then a penguin pet and a Tuscar toy. Now, the boost cannot be used on DKs. So for us in the UK, that is $34.99, but for 25 more pounds, you can also get the other edition, which gets you a Calwak glider mount, uh, one version for classic, one for retail, plus 30 days of game time. Yeah, the mount looks awesome, doesn't it? I also recognize it because I've flown around on the Dragonflight Alpha, because that's one of the taxi mounts. And it is kind of sad, there's not actually two of the Dragonflight uh, taxi mounts have um, have been monetized, right? So the mana worm that we got through the six month thing, that is one of the flight point mounts in Dragonflight. The Tuscar Kite is another flight point mount in Dragonflight. And to be honest, that does feel really shitty to me. Again, I always go back to my example of how they sold us the enchanted Fey Dragon during MOP. And then we went to Wad, and we saw the place where the Fey Dragons were, like, you know, reared by the Draenei. And I just thought to myself, like, if this was Mop, then this would have been a Cloud Serpent-like rap, and I would have been able to do things and, and unlock that mount. So, if I can't get a Mana Worm and a Tuscar Kite in-game, because they've been yanked out for these other additions, I mean, in the case of the Tuscar thing for a separate product, then, man, that would, uh... That feels shitty. But yeah, look, uh, it's Blizzard doing their best to have people treat classic release, which is literally something you don't have to pay for because it's already included in your WoW sub, but they want people to treat it like they are purchasing a copy of the game, right? Because purchasing one of these editions is not just you getting some things. No, it is you actualizing upon your desire to be there for classic, isn't it? Now that aside, the Fresh Start servers are, I think, the place to go. And if you're in the Fresh Start servers, these additional purchases make a lot less sense for you. So I'll get to that in a bit. But the other thing is that the zombie event, which is just goddamn iconic and pretty awesome, that starts next week. And of course, you can get a head start on inscription, achievements, and also make your first DK. Now, if the full 1 through 70 journey feels a bit daunting, just buy a... B Sorry, um, no. The Joyous Journey XP Boost is live, and it will be until the expansion drops, so that's a 50% increase to your XP gains. That'll really help you get your new DK rocketed through Outland. Now, the boost. The boost is obviously an option. It's there. We have to discuss that it's there, but do remember, the boost will not work on a fresh start server, and that also will, of course, include the boost that will come with your heroic or epic edition. So I do wonder how many people are going to fall prey to getting the more expensive edition for the mount to only then realize that the boost won't work in the fresh start server. Uh, so beware of that, I guess. Buyer beware. Um, it's a bit rough the Blizzard have kind of done it in that way. I don't think they're doing it to catch people out. I think it's the devs just trying to say, no, fresh start, it's, you know, it's, it's walled off, you can't do that. So uh, I'm glad that fresh start is not launching with boosts being possible, that's for sure. And Blizzard probably could have earned more money if they did do it that way, so I guess it's good that they're not. Um, and I guess if their only incentive was to sell boosts, then certainly doing a 50% buff uh, to XP gains wouldn't make as much sense. I think they probably realize they just need as much engagement uh, as possible, right? So, you know, have a smaller percentage of people get the boost, but way more overall people be involved. Now, 1 to 70 won't be that bad with a 50% buff, though, so don't worry. As for myself and Wrath Classic, it's really tricky. We have a lot of things going on here. Of course, our game is going to be coming out this year, and that just means that I'm super, super, super busy. So honestly, I'm between a rock and a hard place where would it make a lot of sense for me to click the button on the boost, get the boost? Yes, yes, it kind of would make sense because, um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> working multiple jobs, wahoo. Um, but I really feel like Fresh Start's the way to go. But then I, you know, there's the FOMO is also at play, and I guess that's just how, that's how existing in the modern day gets you. But for me, I mean, my Wrath of the Lich King experience was kind of interesting, you know? I leveled up my original warrior, I kind of dabbled around some content, decided to tank, got extremely stressed about tanking, took a bit of a 
well, actually, you know, I also was grinding up my Netherwing rep and doing all of that, going around, far, you know, farming that cobalt in a circle in Sholazar Basin. Um, then I actually took like a, a short break and then I came back on my Hunter. Um, and basically it's weird because I only raided Trial and, um, yeah, I only raided Trial, well, obviously the Vault um, and a little bit of dabbling in Ulduar and Nax, but mainly my only raiding happened in Trial and in ICC. So, man, do I, ha or of course I did, uh, you know, Anixia, whenever Anixia came out, that was really cool, and, uh, you know, Sarth, but, man, I have that unfinished Ulduar business, right? It's like, you know, Matt, he missed out on Throne of Thunder, one of the best raids ever, and my version of that is that I missed out on Ulduar, so I have a profound feeling of, uh, of unfinished business and the idea of going back to Northrend, where... I mean, I'm my modern self, but I can and now with that, I can fully engage in the expansion and really get the most out of it. Like that is just so, so, so appealing to me. But reality's really hard. There's so many games to play, man. Oh dear. Well, let me know down below. Wrath Classic, what are you doing? So there you have it. Three extremely pivotal months of World of Warcraft are about to go down. And I don't think it's hyperbole to say that this is really one of the most important time spans in the game's history. I mean, sure, the most important is probably launch in 2004, but, you know, it's the first time that we kind of had two very troubled expansions in a row, and we all know the game's really taken a hit from that. So, three troubled expansions in a row? I mean, honestly, that demotes WoW from, from its standing in the industry. What they need is a big win. That's what's going to turn the story of this game around. So that's why I think it's a pretty damn important three months. And at least to be fair to them, this time around, the alpha, now beta testing process, well, while it is shorter, I'd say it is better than really any of the ones I've been in before. And they are being more responsive. And no matter what happens, that is the sort of blizzard that is needed for WoW to move in the right direction course, only time will tell. But that's it for me today. Hope you found today's episode to be to be interesting, I guess. Just let me know between Wrath Classic and Dragonflight, what do you want to do in the game? Anyway, that's it for me. You can check out The Pale Beyond on Steam, and I'll see you next time.